Today I will be explaining Wilson's theorem. Wilson's theorem states that p minus 1 factorial equals negative 1 mod p for some prime p. For those of you who don't know modular arithmetic, I will briefly explain it. Modular arithmetic may seem like a big word, but its meaning is simple. It is basically the remainder when you divide two numbers. For example, 12 mod 5 equals 2 because 2 is the remainder when you divide 12 by 5. Another example is 10 mod 3. Because the remainder when you divide 10 mod 3 is 1, 10 mod 3 equals 1. Another thing in modular arithmetic is congruency. Two numbers are congruent or equal for a specific mod if they differ by a multiple of the mod. For example, you could say that 12 is congruent to 2 mod 5 because they differ by 10, which is a multiple of 5. In addition, you could say that 2 is congruent to negative 3 mod 5 or 12 is congruent to negative 3 mod 5. You could also explain Wilson's theorem on a number line. So let's take this number line in mod 3. So going forward from 0, it's 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0. But you can also go backwards. You would get 2, 1, 0, 2, 1, 0. Okay, now let's go back to Wilson's theorem. Let's try a few numbers. First, let's see if it works if p is 7. We get 7 minus 1 factorial equals negative 1 mod 7. Or, 6 factorial equals negative 1 mod 7. Since 6 factorial equals 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which equals 720, we get 720 equals negative 1 mod 7, which is true. This is because they differ by 721, or 7 times 103, which is a multiple of 7. Now let's try 11. We get that 11 minus 1 factorial equals negative 1 mod 11. Simplifying that gets us 10 factorial, or 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 equals negative 1 mod 11, or 3,628,800 equals negative 1 mod 11. Wow, 3,628,800 is a big number. Anyways, that and negative 1 differ by 3,628,801, which is 328,891 times 11. So it's a multiple of 11. Well, those are big numbers. Now that we've seen how it works, let's go about proving the theorem. To begin, let's examine our first example and using it. We had 6 factorial equals negative 1 mod 7. By pairing up the terms in a certain way, something really cool happens. So, 6 is congruent to negative 1 mod 7, 5 times 3, which is 15, is congruent to 1, and 4 times 2, which is 8, is also congruent to 1. The reason this works is that the numbers that pair up are modular inverses, which means they multiply to 1 for a certain mod. For example, 2 and 3 are modular inverses because they multiply to 6, which is 1 mod 5. But not all numbers have a modular inverse. For example, 2 does not have a modular inverse mod 4. Basically, your number only has a modular inverse only if it's relatively prime or does not share a factor to the mod. In other words, for an integer a and an integer n, for the equation ax equals 1 mod n, x, which is the modular inverse, only exists if a and n are relatively prime. Going back to the example when 2 did not have a modular inverse mod 4 was because they were relatively prime, as they share a factor of 2. Here are some other examples. 2 has a modular inverse mod 5 because 2 and 5 are relatively prime. In addition, 3 has a modular inverse mod 13 because they are relatively prime. Since Wilson's theorem states that p minus 1 factorial equals negative 1 mod p for some prime p, all of the numbers being multiplied in p minus 1 factorial will be relatively prime to prime p. This is because all integers less than a prime number will always be relatively prime to that number. That means all those numbers will have a modular inverse. So if we go back to our other example when p was 7 for Wilson's theorem, we had 6 factorial equals negative 1 mod 7. Then by pairing up the terms, we got 6 times 1 times 2 times 4 times 3 times 5 equals negative 1 mod 7. This works because the numbers that are paired up are modular inverses. Let's generalize this. So if we have p minus 1 factorial, or 1 times 2 times 3 all the way to p minus 1 for a prime p, by pairing up the terms from 2 to p minus 2 with their inverses, we get negative 1. Well, that's it, folks. Thanks for watching.